When a man discovers his doppelganger, he realizes the real enemy was himself all along. Relatable. But seriously, you won't believe what happens next. We start off looking at a view of the city, and if you zoom in, you might see Drake sitting at the top of one of these buildings, because this is Toronto. Anyway, we're also listening to a voicemail from a woman telling her son she's worried about him and how he lives. We now see a man in a car, a pregnant woman on her bed, and two men in black entering a room. A lot of craziness is going on in this room, and you have men just sitting around and enjoying the show. This is a sussy club, but you'll have to use your imagination. Anyway, this woman comes out in a robe and opens a plate from which a tarantula crawls out. The woman now goes on to trample upon the tarantula. Don't worry, you don't get to see the squashing. We leave the scene before it gets to that. The following day, we now see this man, Adam Bell, a college professor in front of his class teaching history. And no, this is not the guy you saw at the club yesterday. Don't worry, you'll understand better later. Anyway, after school, he heads back home. His girlfriend, Mary, joins him not long after. They have dinner together and then clap. Afterwards, she gets up and leaves. The following day, he's back in school delivering a lecture, after which he heads home, sees his girlfriend, and then she leaves. Basically, this is his daily routine. No wonder his mom was worried about how he lives. We now see him talking with a friend at work who asks him if he ever goes to the movies. If you don't, don't worry. I got you covered. Anyway, Adam says he hardly goes out. Relatable. Anyway, the friend gives him a movie suggestion. Where there's a will, there's a way. And Adam says he'll check it out. You think he won't, but he actually does immediately after work. But not at a cinema. He rents a DVD from a shop nearby and goes home with it. But now we see him grading some papers. His girlfriend wants him to come over. But he says he'll join her later, so she leaves. Some moments after, he takes the DVD and starts watching it on his computer. After he's done watching it, he heads to bed, but Mary's not really feeling it this time, so she gets up and leaves. He then sleeps off, and in his dream, he sees this guy who looks exactly like him, but just without the beard, working as a bellhop. He wakes up and immediately goes back to the movies. And yes, that's where he saw the guy. Okay, this is weird. The following day, he starts doing his research to find out who that guy is, and he does. His name is Anthony Clare, and this guy is basically him, but cooler. I can see why he's freaked out. Anyway, to be darn sure, he finds another movie the guy is in and goes to rent it ASAP. He doesn't really care about the movie. He just fast forwards until he sees his doppelganger. He catches sight of him, and now he needs a shower. After his shower, he ransacks his things and finds a torn picture of himself, which he compares to the picture of Anthony. This thing is really killing Adam now. He's not focusing at school. He's not picking up his mother's calls. He's just obsessing over this guy. He now finds an address for the guy's talent agency and does a little shopping for sunglasses before going. He manages to get into the building pretty cleverly, and the first person who sees him, the security guy, calls him Anthony and says he hasn't been around for ages. He points out his beard, though, and asks him if it's for a movie. Adam just plays along and says yes. The security guy then asks him why he's here today because nobody comes in on Saturdays, but Adam just acts like he's here to pick up something. Luckily for him and his covert mission, the security guy says he actually has something for him, and Adam acts like that's what he came here for in the first place. He takes it and runs straight to his car. He opens the envelope and finds a letter addressed to Anthony with his address there, exactly what Adam was looking for. He drives straight to that address. He gets Anthony's home number and goes over to a payphone to make a call. Anthony's wife, Helen, picks up the phone and she immediately thinks it's her husband, but Adam insists he's not Anthony. But then the call gets awkward and Adam just hangs up and starts breathing really fast. Adam heads home and is still obsessing over this whole thing. He calls Anthony and gets through to him this time, but Anthony tells him to never call this line again and he hangs up. Adam calls again and tells Anthony everything. He saw a movie of his and they look exactly alike. He's confused and thinks they should meet. Anthony thinks he's just a stalker, so again he tells Adam never to call again and hangs up. His wife, who's pregnant by the way, asks who's on the phone and Anthony says it's the guy from earlier asking to meet. She thinks he's lying. She thinks it's the husband of a lady he used to see. That leads to a little fight, so Anthony says he needs to take a walk and he leaves. Later that night, Anthony and Helen do their research on Adam separately and now they're both curious. The following day, Helen heads to the school to see Adam, while Anthony calls him and asks to meet later. After the call, Adam seems pretty relieved, so he walks out to get some air and relax for a bit. That's when Helen sees him. She can't believe how much he looks like her husband. She's so shocked that she can't even get herself to talk when Adam is trying to make small talk with her. She's just looking at him so bedazzled and perplexed to make sure she's not being pranked by her husband. As Adam is walking back to glass, she picks up up her phone and calls Anthony. Anthony answers the phone and she can confirm that Adam is not Anthony. She's back home and still so confused. She can't even talk. Anthony is saying a lot of things about blueberries and other random stuff, but she just remains quiet. Later that night, she finally tells Anthony what's wrong. She went to see Adam and he looked exactly like him. She's scared, really scared and confused, but she thinks Anthony knows what's happening. That same night, both men seem to have the same dream where they see a woman with a spider head walking towards them. The following morning, the men link up at the agreed location, a hotel room. I mean, that's an unusual choice for a first date, but 
what do I know? Adam gets in first and Anthony joins him shortly after, looking bewildered. They both stay quiet for some time and then Anthony asks Adam to show him his hands. They have the same hands. The exact same hands. He says maybe they're brothers. Adam says they're definitely not brothers. Anthony now asks Adam if he has a scar on his chest and from the look on his face, you can tell he does. Adam is now getting freaked out, so he drops a letter he took from Anthony's agency on the bed and leaves. He hurries off to his car and drives away immediately. On the road, he sees Anthony power past him on his bike. Anthony gets back home and tells Helen not to worry because Adam won't be calling again. But Helen is still not relieved. None of them are actually. Now the tables have turned and it's now Anthony doing the stalking. He watches Adam and Mary as they head off to their respective jobs and he starts stalking Mary. He gets on the bus with her and watches her lustfully. He keeps stalking her until she gets to her office and sits in front of her desk. When she settles in, he settles outside the office to keep watching her. The following day, Adam is talking about his problems with his mom who obviously can't believe any of this. She says they obviously are not the exact same and just dismisses everything. She goes to bring him blueberries but Adam says he doesn't like blueberries. But remember, Anthony asked for blueberries earlier. She now goes on to tell him that he's her only son and she's his only mother. She says he has a respectable job, a good apartment, and tells him to forgo his dreams of being a third grade movie actor. That statement takes Adam aback. The next morning, both men wake up after having the same weird dream again. This time, it was a giant spider walking around the city and towering over the skyscrapers. We now see Anthony practicing some lines he wants to go and confront Adam with. He thinks he's got it now, so he heads to Adam's house and accuses him of clabbing his wife. It starts off as a question and quickly turns into an outright accusation, quickly followed by a threat. He now tells Adam that for them to be even, he has to clap his girlfriend. He tells him to give him his clothes in his car for a night so he can have his way with Mary, and after that, he'd disappear from his life forever. He says it in a pretty threatening manner, so I'm not surprised that Adam complies. We now see Anthony get into Adam's clothes, take off his ring, and leave his house. But Adam was not just going to sit there and let that happen, was he? So he takes a cab to Anthony's apartment while Anthony is in his car with Mary, and he doesn't even have to do too much to get into Anthony's apartment. The building concierge sees him and thinks he's Anthony, so he asks him what the problem is. Adam says he forgot his key, so the concierge offers to open the door for him. In the elevator, the concierge starts telling him that he can't stop thinking about the other night and he'd love to go back. No, scratch that. He says he needs to go back. Adam, who doesn't know what the heck this guy's talking about, just says he'll see what he can do. I mean, that's the go-to response for when you're not going to do anything about what the person is asking, right? In case you are confused, remember those two guys we saw at the beginning going into the club? Yes, those men were Anthony and this concierge right here. He had the time of his life that night, so he's telling Adam, who he thinks is Anthony, that he needs to go back. Anyway, the concierge now opens the door for Adam and he goes in, but Helen doesn't seem to be home. Adam now goes ahead to change into Anthony's clothes. He checks the fridge and sees a lot of blueberries. He rolls his eyes. He's now just hanging around when he notices a framed photo that looks like the one he found at his house the other time. If you remember, that picture he had was torn in half, but this is the full version. He's with Helen. Or should I say, they are with Helen, because now I don't know if the man in this picture is Adam or Anthony. Anyway, Helen now gets back and heads straight to bed. Meanwhile, Anthony has now arrived at the hotel with Mary. Adam is trying so hard to act like Anthony, but he's failing abysmally because he's basically being too nice. Anthony is never this nice. Anyway, Helen invites him to bed, but the way she's staring into his soul looks like she knows that this isn't her husband. And you won't believe what comes out of her mouth next. She asks him, did you have a good day at school? I knew it. She knew, but she's tired of her husband's BS anyway, and it seems like she won't mind a night off. Adam is shocked, but she tells him not to worry about it. Meanwhile, at the hotel, Mary suddenly jumps up. She points out the mark of the ring on his finger, and Anthony says he's always had this, but Mary is sure that that has not been there. Talk about knowing every single detail about your boyfriend. She's now yelling and asking Anthony who he is. While that is happening, Adam wakes up. Anthony is now driving Mary while Adam is sitting in the living room crying when Helen joins him. He starts apologizing, and Helen is just being a comforting presence. She tells him she wants him to stay, and then, well, well, well we're gonna have to move on again. It gets a little sussy. But things aren't that rosy with Anthony and Mary. They've now gotten into an argument in the car, which ultimately leads to an accident. No way any of them is surviving this. Man, Mary definitely didn't deserve this. Anyway, the following morning, Adam seems to be settling into his new life pretty well. He puts on Anthony's suit and notices that letter he got from his agency earlier. So he opens it and what's inside? A key. Oh, that's the key to that club. Adam now comes out of the room and tells Helen, who just walked from the bathroom to the room, that he won't be available tonight because he has to go out. Surely he has his mind on the club. But when he doesn't hear back from her, he goes to the room to check on her. And what do we see? The huge tarantula occupying the entire room. And believe it or not, that's the end of the movie. No cap. Moral of the story? I have no idea.